I'm George Philander and I'm a professor of geoscience at Princeton University and I have collaboration with South Africans. I spent the last four years, most of my time there, trying to establish a climate institute. Okay, and, and uh, why are you here at this conference and what do you hope to achieve from it? Yeah. Uh, this conference is about uh, e-structure for research and climate. And what I'm concerned about is at the moment there's extreme emphasis on producing products that are useful and that uh, there is less support for work that will simply help us understand phenomena. And what do you mean by useful exactly? Useful for a particular audience of people? Uh, yeah, but in, in this particular case the IPCC produces products for government officials, people who have the job of uh, what's it called adaptation and uh, forgot what the other word is. Uh, basically very practical uses, can they anticipate future climate changes. Uh, the, the big problem we suffer is to improve the models we need to get young ideas, young people involved. Uh, it's not clear to me that this type of highly organized activity appeals to everyone. And you're a member of many international mm. organizations, how do you coordinate climate research worldwide? Uh, at the moment I'm not involved in that, I, I used to be, I and in the days of the Cold War, uh, science was far more bottom-up, in the sense that small groups of scientists would be given resources to organize themselves, plan experiments, and so forth. At the end of the Cold War changed that picture quite dramatically. Scientists were then expected to produce results that are useful. It, science depends, uh, science really serves two purposes. One is to understand phenomena, the other one is to produce useful results. You need a balance between the two. Even to produce useful results, you actually have to understand phenomena. Uh, and I feel this is not fully appreciated, uh, not by laymen. Uh, and do you think, <coughs> is also one of, one of the objectives from this conference, do you hope that people take away a message that there needs to be a balance between the two of usefulness and understanding phenomena? <laughs> That's my hope. Uh, at the moment, the global warming issue discussion is extremely polarized. And because of this polarization, it's paralyzed. We, we're actually not taking steps. Uh, I feel that we, it may sound like an odd term, but we need to democratize science. That instead of having the public simply rely on experts who then happen to disagree, if the public should be sufficiently educated about the issues, that they themselves can have an opinion. And you mentioned about um, kind of inspiring uh, the young people. What are you doing to um, facilitate that? Yeah, but, uh, but basically, earth scientists do not take fully ad full advantage of the fact that everybody is environmentalist. Everybody loves nature. Uh, we should use nature as an educational vehicle. Uh, most people don't realize that what unusual planet this is, that it's the most unusual time in the history of the planet. Once they realize that, I feel they'd be far more inclined to recognize that we're in a peculiar situation that calls for circumspection. The, that it, it's not an ideological fight between believers and skeptics. It, it's a matter of concern to everybody personally. And what mm -hmm. do you think is the most effect effective way to enable e-infrastructures research for climate change? You, the infrastructure, I feel, is, is available. It's the use that's being made of the infrastructure that needs to be diversified. So at the moment, there's very heavy weight given to highly organized efforts programs. It tend to be hierarchical. It, it, it's you mean top down? Top down. Uh, I'd like to see more opportunities for bottom up. Uh, and the youth are most receptive to this. The elders are not quite as receptive. <laughs> so I'm appealing mostly to the youth. Sure. The, I think if we're going to, there's a serious problem not just in the third world, even in the rich countries attracting more young people to science. They tend to go into more strict economics and so on. Uh, we have to make science exciting. Uh, if it's a large top-down bureaucratic activity, we're not going to attract them. Uh, and in your opinion, mm -hmm. if Governments could do one thing, like the government in South Africa, for example, what would that be to help your work? It's uh, basically make uh, science fun. It may sound like an odd thing to do, but at the moment, science is perceived as this very nerdy, 
really elitist activity. You need years of training, and at the end of that, you're unable to explain to people what it is you do. Uh, we have to change the whole concept of science. And I view science as being very similar to sports. Uh, to produce a good soccer team of 11 players, you need every child to be kicking the ball. To produce a very exceptional scientist, you need everybody to take an interest in science. And, uh, we've done remarkably well with the human body. We expect every educated person to know about heart, lungs, liver. Everybody knows the importance of hygiene, uh, diet, exercise. There's no comfortable body of knowledge that is shared by the public about the planet. They don't know why the planet is habitable. Okay. Well, thank you for your time. Oh, my pleasure.